Hey guys, and welcome to the show. Me, 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 me. Today, me, 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 me. We're talking about in tune. Mm, 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 mm. I think I'm a little flat. Hey guys, and welcome to the show. Today I have Elia Bainenson with me. He's an Intune expert. He's also a, a pretty good engineer. Elia, how's it going, man? It's going great, Lex. How are you? Glad to be here. Oh man, listen, this is you know certainly our pleasure. I've been trying to get uh, somebody on the show to talk about Intune for for you know a couple of months. So I was really excited that we got you, and um, uh, I, I think this is going to be a fun show. Well, I hope that uh, you know we can both learn something, and uh, the audience comes away with a better understanding of what what Intune's all about. Yeah, absolutely. So, speaking of that, tell us what Intune's all about. Great question. Uh, oftentimes, when we're talking to customers, and I'm presenting what Intune is and where it fits kind of in the ecosystem, a lot of customers think of Intune as MDM or mobile device management, and that's an accurate description from a number of years ago when we first kind of introduced the Intune service. However, what Intune is now is a part of an ecosystem for managing uh, mobile devices. So it's part of the overall mobility strategy and what Intune specifically does as part of that ecosystem is that it manages devices and applications and allows secure access to resources. Cool. So are we talking essentially just Windows-based mobile devices? We obviously handle Windows-based devices, but um, typically <clears throat> the customers um, are out there in the real world, so we support all the platforms that are prevalent out there in the ecosystem. iOS, Android. We uh, cheer for the dolphins as well, right? Good. <laughs> now I was pointing <laughs> the little Apple logo, but yeah. That's correct. That's correct. Um, yeah. So I am a dolphin fan every now. Device. Nearly every device uh, is supported, including obviously our platform. Uh, the majority of use cases for Intune or MDM, obviously in the real world, typically happen to be what you showed is an iPhone. Yeah. And today, as we discuss what Intune is and kind of what it can do and what it can, what scenarios it can light up and enable, I'll actually walk through a demo of some of the configuration items and some of the policy settings to kind of pique the interest of uh, Intune capabilities that are outside of the MDM sphere. So Intune can do mobile device management. It's one of the fundamental pi pillars of securing a device. However, now the, all of the customers are looking for how they can allow their users be more productive, whether or not the device is fully managed, uh, which, which gets in a kind of hairy scenario when you think about, traditionally speaking, you want to manage and fully own all of the devices that your users are using. and you build out a perimeter infrastructure with a DMZ and a firewall and a WAN and reverse proxies. And traditionally, the only way to securely give access is to poke holes in the infrastructure and set up a reverse proxy or a VPN scenario and essentially make the device think that it's inside the perimeter. And this comes with a tremendous number of infrastructure challenges and considerations. And what Intune and uh, what we'll talk about as part of uh, EMS, or the Enterprise Mobility and Security Suite, uh, what that allows you to do is open up scenarios that are more lightly managed, so that if you don't fully own the device, or if the corporation or um, government entity, and so I work in public sector, so I work with a lot of government customers, uh, when you tell them, I'm going to allow a user to get secure access to email, they get really concerned because they're worried about how to uh, control that device, how to secure it, how to lock it down. So as, as we see um, more and more customers inquiring about Intune, we're having conversations that kind of open up the newer scenarios that are actually quite um, unique in the market. So a lot of vendors that are out there that used to do or currently do, I don't want to put them out of business prematurely, uh, when they do MDM, typically they fully uh, put all of their management bits on the device they containerize the applications through which you have to securely um, grant access through the reverse proxies or the VPNs, and only and then and only then can you get access to resources. Um, and we take a different approach. 
we say that we're not going to fight the trend of more and more devices lighting up and coming online. What we're going to do is enable that scenario from a cost and administrative overhead. So how can we make it easier for customers and IT administrators to be able to leverage the tools that Microsoft and specifically our cloud services in Azure uh, have that uh, will be able to kind of comply with all the security requirements and all the access requirements that they need for their business. So that's kind of where Intune falls in as part of the broader uh, EMS ecosystem. Yeah, that's pretty cool. So um, I know we support Windows devices. I know, you know, we just talked about iOS devices. I'm assuming we support Android devices. Android devices, uh, Knox devices from Samsung. Uh, really? we, uh, Blackberries is something that, that typically comes up from a government uh, scenario because a lot of them have the legacy Blackberries. Yeah. Um, the decision uh, was not to um, support Blackberry management, but outside of Blackberries, uh, nearly every prevalent device that's out there that I see when I engage with customers typically is your iPhone or your Android device and your Windows device. So yeah. that, that's the mobile devices that we're managing. But what I really want to point out here, and one of the things that we'll see in uh, the click-through demo that I'll show, is that you don't always have to fully manage and own the device in order to allow secure access into the corpnet resources that live inside your data center, or they may live in the cloud. See, right now, um, users are uh, mobile, and we live in a cloud-first world, which means that you can't contain where they're going to try to access information from. So what can you do to secure that access as well as to verify that they are who they are and um, make sure that access is granted based on who the user is and, and whether or not you want to layer additional management uh, over top of that device before you grant access. Um, and that's when we're talking about conditional access policies and uh, things of that sort. So do we have more policies for Windows devices or more policies for iOS devices or more policies for Android devices or is it even broken out that way? Great question. Uh, the answer is it depends <laughs> and really uh, it depends on the platform. So from an MDM point of view, the policies we're able to push down to manage the actual device are highly dependent on what the platform is that's accepting those uh, commands. So in the Windows world, you know, obviously we have our OSs which are fully MDM integrated and they have native uh, capability to understand MDM commands. But also if you wanted to deploy, let's say, an agent-based component, you can actually do that through Intune as well. Uh, typically, most large uh, enterprises, they leverage System Center, so you'll have a configuration management agent on the Windows machine, and in that case, um, you can integrate it through System Center. Um, however, uh, going back to which policies differ on which devices is kind of platform specific. So uh, I'm going to stick with it depends, uh, the, the kind <laughs> of uh, non-answer uh, non answer. No, that's but a it good really answer. Doesn't. That's a good answer. Um, and by the way, when you said BlackBerry, I want to point out that you said legacy Blackberries, because Blackberries do make devices that run Android. Correct. So if it's a, so I'll, I'll say it's not hardware specific; it's uh, operating system specific. Yep. Uh, so that Android capable devices obviously are able to be managed. Yeah. Okay. Just wanted to point that out. I didn't want anybody thinking, "Oh man, I got a BlackBerry. I can't do it." Um, and yes. also, the other thing that I wanted to point out is that when we say mobile devices. Uh, what we mean are tablets and phones, correct? And am I missing anything there? You are, because uh, Windows 10 is a mobile device, believe it or not. So and ah. we treat devices, uh, again, so the platform, whether it allows management, basically uh, is dependent on whether or not accepts um, MDM commands. So there's an open standard for mobile device management and you send the commands and the device platform, which could be our Windows platform. And remember, our phones and our desktops and laptops now run a single operating system. So yeah. Windows, Windows 10, you know, the one to rule them all. So I guess technically um, I could manage remotely, I could, I could MDM an Xbox. <laughs> <laughs> you could, I haven't tried that, but you could. However, um, I don't want uh, anyone watching this to get the impression that what we're recommending is that no, you no, use no. Intune in lieu of. So obviously you have your traditional desktop management tools and server yeah. management tools and you'll continue to use those. However, from a platform capability, uh, it does exist. So you actually could uh, manage devices that, let's say, um, it's an interesting scenario. 
uh, an, an employee is on a personal device and on a Windows 10 device and they'd like to get access. So what they can do is they can actually join Azure AD, uh, performing a kind of not a domain join but a cloud-based organizational join. And then we will issue MDM essentially Intune commands down to the device to configure policy settings, um, configuring um, BitLocker, configuring Anti Defender. Uh, it, it depends on how granular you want to get with the management capabilities. I will say it's not as robust as the configuration management client. Uh, you'll obviously, and, and group policy as well, um, in conjunction with the SCM management client, offers you the full rich capabilities that customers are used to. But with MDM commands, if the subset of what MDM can do for you uh, on a Windows 10 device, you can actually issue those commands over the cloud to a Windows device traditionally um, coming in over the cloud. So Windows 10 uh, lights up a lot of those scenarios as well. Wow. But and we'll focus, today we'll focus on iOS. Yeah, and you mentioned you know, Azure AD, which is actually kind of cool because I, I want to point out that really any customer out there that um, wants to could set up Azure AD and then manage devices remotely by doing the same thing that we're doing. Absolutely. Um, yeah. Absolutely. Uh, Azure Intune fundamentally is based on Azure. So it's built out on the Azure platform and it's highly integrated with Azure Active Directory. Um, the policies which you configure within the Intune management console and then you subsequently issue down to the devices, uh, all of that kind of is stored and configured and held and managed through Active Directory or Azure Active Directory, I should say. So if you're already a customer that is thinking of taking the step uh, to go into the cloud or if you're an Office 365 customer, you're kind of halfway there already because Office 365 uh, and Azure Active Directory basically have checked two-thirds of the boxes for you and able to, uh, before you're uh, able to kind of deploy an into policy down to the device. So these are really scenarios that we see um, customers uh, wanting to do but not knowing that the capability already kind of exists with the deployments that they're doing. So it's really interesting to uh, switch the conversation from, oh, I thought Intune was a device management uh, tool that's, you know, I'll only use if I ever run into deploying a CIO's iPhone when he's traveling abroad. Uh, it's much, much more than that. So you can actually integrate that fully into access scenarios, which before you really had to crack open the, the perimeter defenses to allow um, access in. So it's really interesting. Okay, so I understand you have a presentation for us. Yeah, absolutely. It actually um, covers some of the things that we've already discussed, but it's sometimes easier to kind of see it in a written or pictorial format. So um, that works. That works for me. <laughs> yeah, I'm a visual learner as well. So. Yeah, absolutely. Um, the, the the first thing that I wanted to kind of uh, outline here, which we touched upon, is that Intune is a subset of our broader mobility enterprise mobility push. So that when customers are looking to us to find out what tools are available not only on-prem but in the cloud to manage their entire mobile workforce or mobile ecosystem, uh, Intune plays a very significant role. So here what we're looking at is kind of uh, the broad ecosystem that starts with managing and securing the user identity. So uh, Azure Active Directory and then uh, Azure Active Directory Premium has some advanced features. And on the right-hand side you have uh, data protection. Data protection is very critical in uh, the security focused world that we live in because you can manage a device and you can fully lock it down but if that data egresses and leaves the device um, you unless you have policies in place to secure and protect the data itself uh, you will never know what happens to that data afterwards so it's a critical component outside of the scope what uh, what we're discussing about today but in tune here in the middle column and I'll see if my uh, handy presentation tool works uh, Microsoft Intune uh, down here in the middle column services the function of managing and securing those apps and devices. And it's really wow. interesting that apps are uh, secured first or that we in the slide say we're securing the apps here because applications uh, are the bread and butter of what the users actually use. So whether or not the device itself is managed under policy to the user is kind of almost secondary. What they want to know is, can I do the product productivity type of function that I'm used to on the device that you gave me or a device that I may bring uh, 
BYOD or CYOD scenarios. Um, so what we focus on here is managing the device through MDM, but the advanced scenarios are the mobile application management. And so the, the focus is very, very clear on the user productivity and securing the access through the application. So <laughs> to preface kind of our conversation or to set it up once more is um, we're all familiar with the typical scenario that an enterprise deploys to manage their internal on-prem resources. You have your corp net and it's fully secured and then uh, in a demilitarized zone in the DMZ you deploy um, all sorts of security perimeter kind of configurations in order to protect and block anything bad coming in from the outside. Yeah. And now in the mobile world we live in uh, we're faced with the challenges or customers are faced with the challenges of how do I break through that perimeter securely? So uh, this is, uh, when I talk to customers, this is the mindset that I typically find where they have, this is what we know today and just show me how to kind of poke the right holes into the system. And as we talk to them and as we show them what the capabilities are today, we're really uh, opening up their mind to that's not the world you live in. This is this is the reality. The reality is that users and devices are leaving the, uh, the barn. So the, the horse is leaving the barn and there's no way to put the horse back in the barn. You have all sorts of applications and web services that users through legitimate uh, use during business um, need access to and you need to be able to provide securely that access. So how do you transition and translate the world where you fully locked and managed everything on-prem and now you're faced with this, uh, you know, it's kind of like a mesh topography in, <laughs> uh, over here with devices and services and access uh, uh, needs, which means that there is no perimeter here. There, there's really not a defined perimeter. And I, you know, on your show you, you frequently speak with security experts and they tell you the right thing. They say identity is the new perimeter. So how do you secure access, you do it through securing the identity. And Intune, uh, when we see the kind of what it can do and the capabilities, uh, it the premise is that the first thing that we worry about is making sure that the user is who they say they are and based on who they are, we either allow or disallow certain access. Or let's say that if they're coming from an unknown endpoint, we challenge them through multi-factor authentication or other kinds of advanced scenarios. So to put it into a kind of mobile device perspective, on the, on the base level, through the platform uh, specific kind of capabilities that we discussed, the mobile device management piece is serviced by Intune. So when you think of, well, I thought Intune was MDM. Um, yes, it is, but MDM is a very, very small subset, a necessary subset, but still a subset of what the ecosystem, um, the capabilities through the enterprise mobility uh, and security suite are. My favorite parts are not in MDM. So MDM allows you, for instance, to disable the camera on the cell phone, um, which is useful in certain scenarios, but it's not very, um, uh, the users aren't rushing to get that capability. What the users want is their email. So on top of the management layer through MDM, we have all of the additional services that are integrated uh, with enterprise mobility. You see we have, uh, Office 365, so the fully native Office uh, productivity apps. We have Active Directory or Azure Active Directory, uh, so integration with your identity solution. And typically in, in uh, large customers, what we see is a federated identity where when they actually go to authenticate, typically they work through um, an identity provider, uh, an intermediary, uh, so for us it would be ADFS. Uh, we can, we've fully worked with other third-party um, federation providers. But you want to control identity um, and know who your users are and allow access or deny access based on who they are. And Intune here services the application. So we discussed the applications being kind of the core of what the user expects and what the IT administrator kind of wants to control. Uh, Azure uh, IP here, these are not IP addresses, this is <laughs> Azure Information Protection, which is uh, the artist formerly known as RMS. Um, so this is what we're talking about when you want to set policies that apply directly to your data and those uh, encryption and security policies travel with your data. So when you think of the full 
capability stack, most of it happens at this layer. Now, one, one additional piece that um, is very important to discuss is that through Intune, we provide application developers the ability to leverage all the things that we've kind of turned on, all the advanced MAM capabilities in our office um, suite, and extend their own applications uh, with what we call the Intune uh, App SDK. So you can actually have extensibility to your own applications, uh, and we actually have a tremendous number of vendors that have already kind of implemented uh, the Intune SDK into their application, which means that the application becomes what's called uh, enlightened. So when, when we speak of can an application accept this type of policy which does, let's say, copy and paste restrictions uh, or secure uh, containerizes the data and uh, only allows corp access to that data based on the identity, all of those native func functional features that you see oftentimes demoed in Outlook or Word, which by the way we'll be doing <laughs> in a few minutes, you can actually extend into your own application. So um, the API calls that are made will be fully understood if you integrate that with the um, into an SDK. So kind of that's the extensibility part of it. And obviously you go uh, interact with many, many services that are both on-prem and in the cloud. And uh, SaaS applications are the ecosystem of SaaS applications that are out there that we kind of saw earlier. Th this... Um, this brings us to a kind of a good point to discuss, okay, well, the capabilities seem great. How do I actually integrate this into my environment? Intune, as uh, the platform, can be integrated by itself or as a cloud-only service. On the left-hand column, you do so through an administrative web portal. You set up the configuration policies, and then you deploy them down to the devices. Um, in, in typically, uh, a lot of our customers who are large and um, on, on you know many, many thousands of endpoint scale and hundreds of thousands uh, and are distributed worldwide, they've already invested very heavily in their own infrastructure. And if you're using our platforms, majority of our customers also use System Center uh, and Configuration Manager specifically to manage their devices. So the question that I always get or very frequently get right off the bat is, well, can we do all of this through Configuration Manager? And an the answer is, yes, you can. So I bet you thought I was going to say it depends. But no, it doesn't depend. You actually, you can do it through System Center. And what, what happened in that scenario is that System Center would be kind of the single glass of pain administrative console that you would use to configure policies, which then would be pushed up to the cloud to the Intune service. And then the Intune service is the actual service endpoint that talks down to your devices that are outside of your typical perimeter controlled system center agent devices. So if you have devices which are on-prem and fully managed by system center, uh, the native agent in system center will continue to manage those. But hey, so I, I have a question real quick. So sure. is there a is there a service or something along those lines that you have to install on the mobile managed devices? Uh, not on the mobile managed devices. What you do have to uh, kind of configure is a connector service between System Center and Intune itself so that right. you can establish a secure trust relationship between your tenant in the cloud and your System Center. Um, but we don't have to push down a, 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 an app or anything. You like do that. not. Okay. So the, one, of the, one of the challenges to bridging that kind of gap of when I leave my DMZ or when I'm not on a traditionally desktop managed device is that um, all the protocols are now web-based protocols. You're, you're not talking Kerberos to these devices. You have to talk you know, web security protocols, uh, SAML and the like. Uh, yeah. So to, to bridge that kind of chasm and that divide, what you have to do is talk securely and natively to the cloud service, which then native, speaks the native language of the mobile devices. And then it will talk uh, to them, issue commands to them over HTTPS, and you're not uh, kind of trying to put a square peg in a round hole by putting, how do we figure out to put an agent on the device? So we want to we want to have less administrative overhead. And so right. it's actually, it works really well because 
we, if you are ready to deploy into or turn on some of the capabilities, you can kind of integrate that with System Center. The one caveat and that I want to really point out that um, is well understood is that in Intune, for your tenant, you can only have, it's kind of like uh, Highlander, there can only be one. Um, you can have a single mobile device management authority and you set that up at the very beginning of your Intune kind of deployment. So you have to make these architectural decisions fairly early on in the process because Intune cloud only, um, you set the MDM management authority in the cloud. So the cloud service becomes authoritative. If you're going the system center hybrid integration cloud, you have to set it at the system center level so that all uh, authoritative commands are issued from the system center console. Then they're passed on to the Intune service, which proxies them back down to the devices. Um, one, one of the things that I'll be showing here is the right-hand column, which says, you know, all this stuff is complicated, uh, agents and protocols. Uh, my users just want email, and I want to be able to deliver that to them securely what's kind of the least barrier to entry? What, what's the lowest hanging fruit for me to be able to try some of these Intune capabilities out? And that's on the right-hand column here is what we call MAM WE. So that's uh, Mobile Application Management Without Enrollment, which is, I want to pause there and stress that. Anyone familiar with mobile device management platforms, whether they're ours or any other uh, vendor, before you can issue anything down to the device, you have to fully own and manage that device. So typically what that means is you have to go through an enrollment process. The enrollment process is, you know, depending on the platform, is a multi-step scenario where the user has to accept that management is going to come to the device, and it takes some configuration. Mobile application management without enrollment means we set policies in Intune and they don't look at what the device is that's um, trying to access the resources. It looks actually at the application level and at the user identity level. So that when the, che when the policy is enforced and when the checks are made, it's kind of agnostic as to which device you're coming from, which means that you're now, you don't have to be in the business of owning every single de device that your users are using simply to provide secure access to your resources. And this is something that I have uh, kind of a demo of how that experience works on an iOS device, what the user would see, then followed by what the administrator would be looking to configure as well as what the end result is on the platform when once those policies are in place. Sound yeah, interesting? Sound yeah, good? it's really, really good, really cool. So before we talk about what that process looks like of MAM without enrollment or mobile application management policies without enrollment, it's critical to understand what mobile application management means from our EMS or Intune perspective. So here you have a typical device, and we have your iOS device, and on it, this device contains all sorts of applications. It contains applications which are personal, it contains applications which are corporate, um, and we kind of have a delineation here uh, shown by this line that says, you know, typically what you want to do is containerize your applications away um, to secure your corp data from your personal data. We go an additional step further, which I think differentiates us from uh, all the other vendors, is that we actually, within the application, and here's Word, we separate policies based on the identity. So here it says multi-identity policy. This means that if you're using an application um, that is, again, that enlightened application that's in tune aware, and that application has policies deployed down to it, it will differentiate based on who the user identity is, whether or not that policy will um, prevent or not prevent the data exfiltration, and it's based on the user identity. It's not based on the containerized application itself, So, which means that if you're using Outlook, which is the num by far and away the number one uh, email client in our office suite um, is by far and away the, big, the best productivity suite on any device, you can use Outlook to manage both your corporate email as well as your personal email and our policies are going to be aware of the difference, and they're going to enforce their corporate restrictions based on which um, login information or what the identity is that's trying to access that data. Some of the things that those kind of granular identity-based policies can do is uh, block copy and paste operations, block save operations, uh, and also allow inter-app 
uh, data exchange. So that if you say, I want to create a policy such that my managed corporately owned applications that I've deployed down to the device or that the user has downloaded from the, uh, the relevant store, uh, those applications that are understood by my corporate entity, they can all exchange and share data, but your personal applications will have no kind of inbound access. And that's one of the policy settings that we'll see here to kind of illustrate what the advanced MAM capabilities are. Sound good? That sounds awesome. All right, so this scenario here, we'll walk through uh, a user on an iPad device opening up uh, OneDrive to access their corporate documents. And this is before anything. This is not an IT provided device. This is their home device. They've gone to the, the App Store and they've downloaded OneDrive. They happen to know their um, email, username, and password. Here you can see we're logging in with a cloud-based identity. Uh, it works the same way if you choose to federate at this point and have your on-prem infrastructure be authoritative and, uh, and authorize you access. But fundamentally, the process is the same. The user is trying to get into OneDrive and try to access their corporate documents. So here we're looking at a device that is not managed and doesn't have any policies on it. And so here you'll see them typically be prompted to authenticate. We're doing cloud-based authentication here. And once you're in uh, OneDrive, you'll see all of your corporate files that are available to you. And what we'll do is we'll open up the marketing file. And the, what this harkens back to the EMS kind of ecosystem of you really want to have a holistic approach to how you grant access and how you secure access. So that if a user has authenticated correctly, and this user has, you still want to kind of prevent them from being able to take that data and save it or copy and paste it off to places where they really shouldn't be copying and pasting it to. Here, what, what is a typical operation is you want to save this uh, to the local iPad, and right now there's no restrictions, and that operation works. So that now document has been saved locally to the device, and uh, that data will stay on that device. Uh, similarly, what you can do is you can do a select and copy operation and copy that into a new document. And you can see here the paste option comes up and you can paste that data. So this is where the challenges are that customers and uh, IT shops face is that, you know, we really love our users to be using these applications, but, you know, I don't want to give them access because whether they know their username, that they can get in using their username and password uh, or not, because once they have it on there, I can't control it. So now we'll look at the admin experience of setting up through the Intune portal, actually the Azure portal and the, uh, the new Intune MAM scenario, where an administrator will go in and configure a policy that will apply to the user, and the user will then go back to that device and do the same operation, and we'll, we'll see the end result. So now the admin is logging into the Azure portal, and you can see it looks much different from the Silverlight portal that is typically used for um, Intune MDM management. But if you click on Browse, what you want to look for is the node that says Intune. So I'll highlight it down here. What you want to do is select Intune, and that will allow you to configure the MAM policies. We, when you select Intune, right now kind of we're starting from a blank slate, you will now have the option to select policies and who those policies apply to and what those policies enforce and don't enforce. And we'll walk through step by step. Okay. So here on the, on the app policy node, or blade, um, what we'll do is we'll add a policy and we'll name it iOS, very creative. And on the platform, you, can see, you see we have the option for iOS and Android. Um, Typically, uh, when it's a Windows device, we have um, kind of other controls in other places uh, to configure these kind of restrictions. So this highlights the kind of well-asked-for scenario of most of my users are using iOS and Android when they're in this scenario downloading Outlook. So this is kind of what we're targeting or downloading OneDrive. So okay. when you have, <clears throat> you have the platform selection here, and now what we're going to do is we're going to target OneDrive and we're going to target Word. So that means that the applications you highlight here will be kind of bundled together under the same policy. And once they're selected, we go now and 
target some users. What you want to do is you want to do group-based management. So you want to find and know where that user lives and find the relevant group. He happens to be in the sales and marketing group. And you're going to go ahead and select that. So now that policy is being targeted to that group. And this is, this is where, kind of, uh, where all the action happens. This is the MAM policy setting node. I kind of want to highlight a couple of key areas here. So under allow app to transfer data to other apps, these two settings kind of control the ingress and egress based on which application is trying to access it. What we've set here is that only policy managed apps, i.e. apps that are controlled um, through the corp, uh, only they are allowed to transfer and exchange data. Um, what you can do also is set ingress rules. That means that can I copy into a managed applications? And here we've allowed all applications to do that. Prevent save as. This is one of the most asked for features. What you want to do is you want to prevent that user from being able to save that document off to somewhere else. So this is where you would uh, select that option. Restrict copy and paste. Here again, we're saying, uh, and I'll highlight here, uh, only policy managed apps with paste in, which means that you're allowed to paste into them, but you cannot paste out. And so the other things that we're going to kind of highlight as part of this policy is that typically what you want to do is have kind of a stronger factor of authentication just to get into the app when it's managed. And here what we're going to do is we're going to require a pin to be set up to access the application and uh, prevent here the device from being jailbroken so that you can't, uh, you know, it's a trusted non-jailbroken device. So that those are the settings that we'll set in this policy. And now we're going to, this this is where um, the kind of proof is in the pudding of we're not doing any magic and we're not actually enrolling a device. If you take a look at the device, typically if you go to the settings node, what you'll see if that uh, iOS device is managed is that under here, under the VPN setting in general, you'll see uh, management, device management node. We don't see anything here. So on this device, we see that it's not enrolled. It's not under corporate control. This is a user's device that they're using. Right. So we go back to OneDrive. And again, we're going to re-authenticate as the user. Uh, familiar authentication prompt. This is now new. What happened is during the authentication process, Azure AD looked up the user information and said, oh, you have a policy that's now targeting you from Intune. And that policy has put restrictions over this application. The user now sees a notification that says, you know, your IT department protects uh, data in this app. You know, they can click OK. And again, that pin policy that we just set, uh, that's also being enforced on an application level. So remember, this is an enlightened application. It's had the Intune aware bits cooked into it through the SDK. So now all of those policy commands are natively understood in this application. And you can set these things up for any application that's uh, integrated with the Intune SDK, uh, of which there are many in, in our partner ecosystem. So here we're going to set up a pin, um, look away. It's very complicated. And now we're going to go and open that same document. And again, it's bringing up Word. Word, under our policy, is also a managed application. So that means that we now are prompting the user that anything they do in here can be held against them. No, I'm just kidding. Um, <laughs> what, would they have some corporate restrictions? You, you uh, know that's the fear, right? <laughs> that's right. Um, so now they're prompted just to notify them that, you know, by the way, we have some management over this application that you logged into as the corporate user, so as the corporate identity. And one of the policies we set in effect is that we're going to prevent save as. So we go to duplicate and we're going to select iPad. So saving that to the local device. And it says your administrator doesn't allow saving. So this is, we haven't managed this device. We haven't enrolled this device. This is the application handling all of these right. security checks. Yeah. So this so is that, really, really cool. Yeah. So let me ask you a question real quick. So. So the only thing that's, effect, that's affected by this at all are these apps, correct? Correct. It doesn't yeah. uh, know anything about, nor does it care about any other application that's on the device that wasn't specifically targeted when we set up that policy. So, so my device is still my device, my apps correct. are still my apps, except for the apps that are managed by, by the company. Correct. 
So this is very, very granular as to what you want to control and what and who gets access. Um, and you, you really typically don't want to be in the business of having to either fully manage the device or inadvertently delete data that's, you know, maybe pictures on the device or something that your users will get very, very upset about. So you want to really stay within that container and within that boundary. And uh, the policies really allow you to do that. Yeah. So now and, we've and blocked... So, so hang on. So so uh, just, just to that point, and that's a huge issue for customers, right? Because, I mean, you know, I bought this device. It's something that I paid for with my own money. I'm using it to make myself more productive. I want to run these apps that you know the company that I work for wants to push down, but I don't want to give up control of my device. Absolutely, and yeah. one one of the biggest challenges and hurdles in deploying uh, new technology is that you want to make sure that your users accept what you and IT are giving them. So, uh, if you're in, um, constraining them and if it's making the process to access resources more cumbersome, typically you'll find that, that users are going to revolt or they're going to uh, seriously resist that initiative from IT. Here, we're saying this is so lightweight that it's really specific to applications and corporate users, and they're using their own devices, which we don't touch uh, and we don't want to manage, and we're telling them that only when you're using corporate data and corporate access, are we going to overlay some management? Uh, which is really, really cool. And the users, once they see that, you know, they, they start queuing up and, and saying, oh, please, please give me Intune. What they mean is, <laughs> please uh, add me to the group, which uh, receives the policy. Yeah, so I, yeah. I, so, so what happens after that, right? What happens, let's say, you know, somebody comes in, they bring, they bring their mobile device in, they work for the company for six months, and then, you know, they move on. What ha is there a way to remove Great question. this stuff? Uh, we there's a there's a group of ninjas that works for Microsoft, uh, and they're really <laughs> good at you know, um, what what the options are. Once you enroll a device, or what, once you have control over the device, uh, you can do several types of wipes. You can do a full wipe if the device is fully managed under MDM, which means basically factory restore it. Uh, you can do a selective wipe so that if your device were under management and you, let's say, deployed Outlook and a couple of other corporate applications, but the user also downloaded some of their own personal applications, when you do that selective wipe and you issue that command from the console, it removes only what the corporate IT um, admin set up so that you know, your um, corporate corporate deployed applications would be removed and any data associated with those applications would be removed, including if you've pushed down any sort of certificates onto that device for VPN access, all of those right. would be removed and revoked. Uh, what it doesn't do, for instance, I, I mentioned that scenario where you are using now that same application under multiple identities. You know, you have multiple emails uh, accounts set up within Outlook. If you do a selective wipe, this is another really cool thing is that it will only remove the corporate identity and anything associated with that. It will leave your personal email alone. Right. So and, I would say and, it's and I think, yeah, I think that's the scenario, right? That's the, that's the one that, I mean, IT departments per personally, I don't think they want to, they don't, I don't think they care about managing your personal device, right? They just want you to be able to work and they want to be able to protect their own data. And Correct. and as a, somebody that's purchased a personal device, you know, I don't want anybody managing my device. I just want to be able to work and I, I certainly don't want to put company data at risk. So it really sounds like that's going to be, you know, the, the, the scenario that we see most often moving forward. Yeah, when, when um, and here's another uh user ask as well as um, uh, an IT kind of uh, barrier to entry that we remove by opening up these scenarios. A lot of customers come to us and say, you know, we've already deployed an MDM solution. Um, how do we get off that MDM solution and let's say go over to Intune and use Intune as the MDM solution? What you can actually do because this is an application level setting, you can deploy these application policies down to a device that's managed by other MDM vendors. So the transition from um, removing the older technology and coming on board to the new is, is much simpler now. And from the user point of view, they don't have to have uh, you know, their devices uh, wiped and reissued. They can kind of continue doing what they've always done. So 
we not only the users don't want IT managing uh, the devices, the future of how access is going to happen in a mobile world is that you're not really ever going to be under full control of where the access is coming from. So what you want to make sure is that you know and understand who the user is and are able to uh, st strongly authenticate them and that you want to make sure that any data or any resources they access are secure. So, and, and that's really what Intune provides uh, in, in the MAM world, the mobile application management world. Cool. So, uh, one, one final, uh, you know, um, set of things that we want to check here is that we also deployed in that policy a copy and paste blocks which means that you know your user is very savvy and you know you blocked the save as operation but you know I'm very crafty and I'm just going to copy and paste this over to another application so what you do is the user selects copy and then they go and open file and they go to paste it and again the application understands that that user data was contained in the corporate controlled uh, world so that the containerization is actually happening at the identity level not even at the application level so they're still within the same word application they're just under a different identity context and it's blocking the paste operation here um, so if they really wanted to s copy and paste this document they'd have to go to their corporate OneDrive, not their personal open a new document and then paste it in there yeah. So there's there's a uh, complete differentiation from kind of how we approach managing and securing the data and the content and the application itself from what is typically kind of understood as MDM. So we're, I, we're I assume operating. there's a policy, right, for to prevent you from moving stuff from OneDrive for business to your personal OneDrive. Right. Yes. And uh, and that policy would be, you know, it's in that same place where we saw in the Azure portal you create that's an option where you say applications can accept data in if they're managed or they can only talk among themselves and not accept any data in or restrict data to only go within those managed and fully controlled applications. And again, the yeah. administrator determines what those applications are. That's so really it's really, really interesting. Yeah. Yeah, I like it. So that that uh you know that concludes my show and tell here. Um, <laughs> well, listen, man, that that was awesome. It was certainly uh, certainly very interesting. But uh, listen, man, thanks for doing that for us. Um, I think it answered a lot of questions. There's um, certainly a lot of people interested in this technology, and so you know the the goal of all of these shows is that somebody can pull this up, take a look at it, and by the end of the day, you know, by the end of the show have a, a pretty decent understanding of, of exactly what that technology entails. And so, you know, awesome job today. That was phenomenal. Well, I'm happy I could, uh, I could talk about Intune, and uh, I'm glad to be here, and uh, thanks for having me, Lex. Yeah, man, no worries. And so uh, I guess uh, we're not going to keep you guys any longer, so that's your taste of Premiere. <laughs>